they're a good size for handling. So we've got, got two in here. You got the silver carp and you got big head carp. This guy here is a silver carp. You know, he's pretty silvery, so that's one indication there. These guys here, you can see they have a, a bigger head on them. And what's interesting about the big guys, their eyes are much lower on their head than the than a, like on a regular fish that I would be up here. These guys are here, and they're all plankton feeders, you know, so they you can see that their mouths are kind of upturned here. They have small mouths, no teeth, and they just filter the uh, plankton. You know, they got real big gills here. Oops. Slippery little guys, and they have the big gills that they filter through here. They come to us gutted, so that's one less thing we have to mess around with. But that's them there. So these guys here, these fish jump out of the water. They're, they're, if you look on YouTube and etc., there's all these videos of these fish just flying around. People wear helmets. When the DNR goes sampling with these guys, uh, they do an elect they do electroshocking of the fish, and it stuns them. But these guys are so sensitive to electricity that they actually. They have a hard time getting it because they can sense it much more than other fish. But they, when it gets near them, they jump out of the water like crazy. And it's, you know, they knock people in the head and knock people out of the boat. It's wild, you know? So, <laughs> and we're going to take it just. We got really heavy bones. Normally, I would scale this fish. Any fish that we use, we scale. But since I'm going to skin this, I'm not worried about scaling. Now, if this was a regular fish, like a salmon, for instance, this would pretty much be done. And we could use utilize this fillet here. Um, it would just have a row of pin bones right here, which we could take a pair of tweezers and just pluck out. These guys, I can't really show you the bones without my handy dandy x-ray machine, but there's a row of bones all the way down the middle here that go this direction here, and they're Y-shaped. So you can't really hold, when you get a hold of a piece of it, you break off the other piece of it. So, and I've tried to bone these as carefully as I can, but you leave a hole, like right here is all gone. Then there's a row of bones right here, and there's a row of bones back here. And so when you're done with it, there's nothing left really. So it's really why this is, we go from here, we take that skin off that we don't need. Like so, nothing to do with that really. And then they have a bloodline on the back here. And what I've been doing is just because that's a little more flavorful and stronger. And a lot of people don't really like that on there. I could probably leave it in, but I always just trim that just a little bit right there and take that out. And then this is what we're gonna end up grinding. So we, I just put these on the middle like this and I can put it through my grinder. You know, I like to take, I do photography a lot. I think fish eyes are awesome things. I mean, we get some just really cool fish eyes in some of these fish in here. So I have, a, I have an eye folder on my, <laughs> my computer. <laughs> you know, we've seen the grinding part and, or the cutting part rather. Now we're getting to the grinding part. So I'm gonna, this, this is just basic grinder action here. So, and if you cut them these long skinny strips, I find it works pretty easily. Now the grinding plate that I have in here is a small hole plate. So what it's doing with these bigger bones in here is actually gonna push them up against the plate here. It's not really getting ground into the fish. Some of the smaller bones are, but the bigger bones are actually gonna, when we take this apart, I'll show you, there'll be a ring of bones around that. So those are the bones. So you can have a new bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sell these now, right? <laughs> Carp bracelets. But no, see, you can see these are the heavy bones. The smaller bones that were inside there are really small, and they do get ground up into the fish, so you're getting a little extra calcium in your fish. But these are the big bones that are really hard to remove, and they're kind of the Y-shaped bone. This is our mix of spices here. Lemon zest, uh, thyme, pepper, all that good stuff. I was lucky some gnome came and made it all for me this morning. So we're going to add that, and really that's all the flavor this fish needs. It's in itself alone, it's really bland, so it really needs a little something there. So we're going to mix that in, and I'm going to put about two cups of uh, panko crumbs in here too. That five pounds of uh, just helps bind it a little bit and uh, makes it a little firmer when you're making burgers. This is what we'll be sampling at the Taste of Chicago. We'll be doing them with a jalapeno tomato chutney and one little bun, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so it's tasty. You can also just pan saute this, and uh, you could throw these like cooked little critters on top of a salad or something like that, or mix them into a, we had them in the halibut soup, we could do it in a halibut like meatballs we do, but you can make these into meatballs. Can you just take these, you know, take the mix by hand and just form them like so. If you make a bachamel and mix this into a bachamel, basically it becomes croquettes, and you can form these into uh, like little oblongs like so. And then you could dip these in breadcrumbs and then egg and then uh, like a panko crumb again and uh, fry them up and they're outstanding. 
I had an interesting conversation with the EPA the other day and one of the things we were talking about, he liked that we were doing sustainable fish. And my goal is only to sell sustainable fish and carp is a sustainable fish more than we may want. How long would he stay in the grill? They're almost done now. It's been a total probably, I'd say like eight minutes or something like that. They're probably going to be done. Even if they were a bigger burger, they're going to be done in that time. So with all fish, I like to take it out of the refrigerator probably a half hour before I cook it. You know, put it on the grill because if it's ice cold out of the refrigerator, it takes that much longer to, for the heat to penetrate the middle and sometimes the outside gets more done, which is especially important for like tuna, marlin, things you want to be a little bit rare. 